Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I wanted to cover some of the latest news going on with Credit Suisse, which appears to be imploding before our eyes. Before we get into the most recent articles, I just want to play some um, clips here to kind of bring you up to speed on some of these recent scandals. This comes from the Financial Times, from a, um, a little report that they did about two weeks ago, a little less than two weeks ago. The cogs really start to come loose at Credit Suisse. The chief executive at the time, Tijan Tiam, he's a debonair, gregarious, international financier celebrity. One of the people he brought in was a former auditor from EY, Iqbal Khan, hyper ambitious. But the two men, whether it was Tijan Tiam's leadership style or Iqbal Khan's vaulting ambition, started to fall out. Okay, so just to make a comment here, this is... Um, one of the more recent scandals where you had this sort of two competing, almost sociopathic type of figures um, going back and forth with each other and really um, making the bank look incredibly bad and unprofessional. Someone at Credit Suisse decided to hire a spying firm. These people started following around Iqbal Khan and he noticed. He stopped his car in the center of Zurich and, and confronted them. This is something that usually you watch on TV, cars following another car, and, and, and this is something not in Swiss uh, uh, culture. A lot of this was around the bickering between Iqbal Khan and, and Tijan Tiam, doing unneighborly things to each other. And I think that probably struck a lot of Swiss as being deeply inappropriate. And 2021, however, would turn out to be one of the most tumultuous times in Credit Suisse's 166 year history. His promise was completely in tatters. You had these two mega scandals that from a financial point of view were vastly more relevant than the Spygate affair. And so by Spygate, they're referring to what we just talked about with um, Mr. Khan hiring a spy firm to follow around uh, his underling, um, not referring to the Spygate of the Trump administration. This is the Credit Suisse Spygate, if you will. Disaster struck at the beginning of March 2021. Credit Suisse had been persuading its wealthiest clients to invest in a suite of funds known as the Greensill Supply Chain Funds. Greensill was very heavily linked to an industrialist, Sanjeev Gupta, but also SoftBank, the huge Japanese technology slash speculative investor. Not all of the deals that were going down were entirely above board. Allegations of fraudulent invoices, circular financing. They had amassed 10 billion of funds from these wealthy clients. And the promise was, put your money in here, it's very safe. Early 2021, all of the supply chain finance stuff around Lex Greensill, Sanjeev Gupta and SoftBank starts to unravel. The so that's $10 billion of their clients' money that basically was just squandered. Bonds that Credit Suisse investors had been persuaded by the wealth management unit to invest in, were not going to get paid back. Something as prosaic as insurance policies coming to an end brought these funds to a staggering halt. That was a trigger to the collapse. Underlying that were investments in risky future receivables. They were investing in the bet that those monies would be paid over. And Credit Suisse was forced to suspend them, locking in $10 billion worth of their clients' assets. And Credit Suisse was reeling from this. It lurched from one crisis to the next, this time 3,000 miles away in New York. Bill Huang's family office, Archegos Capital, Bill Huang had made oversized bets on a few stops using enormous leverage from the so-called prime brokerage businesses of a number of global banks. None of the banks knew quite how much leverage Bill Huang had. It's actually 160 billion. Lots of banks were caught in this. Morgan Stanley, UBS, Credit Suisse was... Right, but Cre Credit Suisse had the biggest um, risk... Uh, liability here, as you can see, far greater than all of the others. Left nursing $5.5 billion worth of losses, its biggest trading loss in its entire history. Oof. The bank is back in crisis again. One of the main scandals that afflicted Tijan Tian's time at Credit Suisse was a terrible incident where some of their staff collaborated with a middleman and a Russian bank, VTB, to sell three billion of bonds to the country of Mozambique, ostensibly to build a fleet of amphibious warfare vehicles to protect a separate fleet of tuna fishing boats. But a significant amount of this money was embezzled. Whoa. 
who could have guessed that something like that happens at these large financial institutions? Embezzlement? What? By the various bankers involved, the middlemen, and local officials. We're acting on behalf of bondholders who are suing Credit Suisse in connection with bonds they arranged and issued in favor of Mozambique. The debt is unpaid and due and owing, and it stands at 200 million. This was historic, of course, in 2004 and 2007. The details are shocking. Their due diligence for their clients is put Okay, so this is uh, where we get to sort of the allegations of human traffickers and um, international uh, drug cartels and drug dealers utilizing Swiss banks, Credit Suisse in particular here, um, because of the secrecy, right, that is promised to them and how they they kind of knew the, what they were dealing with and didn't care. Seeing Bulgarian news articles into Google Translate and attempting to read them. What was really crucial was protecting the secrecy of clients, even to the point where headlines about assassinations, drug smuggling weren't enough to dissuade risk management from continuing to take money from those clients. And it just raises the question, how many other clients like this do they have? It looks like an emerging country where uh, there is absolutely no regulation, criminal uh, involved. Um, and money laundering at this uh, at this level is um, yeah no, it's unbelievable. So well, I'd like to say that it's unbelievable, but quite frankly, it isn't, and it isn't just Swiss banks that have been implicated in that type of activity. J.P. Morgan Chase was as well. Called Swiss leaks data dump. This detailed lots of cases where the bank had previously offered a sanctuary to dirty money flowing around the world from family members of kleptocrats and oligarchs, corrupt government officials and criminal organizations. Unwanted links to potential human trafficking, embezzlement. Credit Suisse confirmed 90% of those accounts are now closed since 2015. There is still 10% of the account which are still under uh, scrutiny. So ESOS, um, at the general meeting 2022, requested a special audit on this uh, affair, Swiss leaks, and on the, on the Green Seal, Affairs. Attempting to cover up their business with sanctioned oligarchs. So, yeah, they had this internal audit that found that there were very, very bad practices in place, and it was sort of a, um, a company culture. The remuneration system gives a wrong incentive to the client relationship manager, trying to, to, to get some net new money at any price. Risk taking was in fact rewarded. It also doesn't appear to have the right systems and checks and balances. We as an organization should have better monitored and controlled certain behaviors. Governance and the risk management is for every financial institution critical and central. If you're looking at the future viability of its business, you've just got some of their top staff in the investment bank, in the wealth management unit, leaving. They're fed up because bonuses are being cut and it's kind of franchise damaging. Like how long you can, can you survive if all of your top people leave? Bank is very serious about changing itself, but it's like turning a super tanker. The question is whether the amount of time that it's going to take is as much time as Credit Suisse's shareholders are willing to give the ex Well, exactly. And how long until their investors and their shareholders have had enough? Executives. We have taken very decisive steps. It starts at the top with the board of directors. 50% of our members are new or less than a year in their job. We have everywhere new committee chairs, including me as the new chairman. We have a brand new executive board with 11. So guess what? One of these uh, two survivors on the executive board just left today. Out of 13 members that are new, shareholders give us credit. They believe in Credit Suisse, but we need to show progress. Yeah, and the of course you do. Okay, so let's talk about some of these recent scandals and let, we'll try to keep this brief. Um, I'm going to include the links to everything in the video description, including the uh, video that you just watched some clips from, from the Financial Times. This was from just February of this year from The Guardian. What is this C Swiss secrets leak and why are we publishing it? 
banking secrecy is an issue of global public interest that can have a profound impact on the world's poorest. Revealed, Credit Suisse leak unmasks criminals, fraudsters, and corrupt politicians. <laughs> Ooh, big shock. Credit Suisse leak raises painful questions for the bank. Yes, by Paul Lewis, head of investigations. In popular culture, there is nowhere safer to stash your cash than the vault of a Swiss bank. From thrillers to spy novels, Swiss bankers are depicted as discreet men in suits who know which questions not to ask. As James Bond quipped in The World Is Not Enough, quote, If you can't trust a Swiss banker, what's the world come to? Unquote. Switzerland dismisses such stereotypes as lazy and outdated. But its reputation as one of the premier tax havens has not come out of nowhere. The country has nurtured, codified, and even advertised the discretion of its bankers for centuries, enjoying lucrative returns as wealthy elites flock to the Alps to stockpile their riches. Over the past decade, however, things have started to change. When Switzerland began requiring its banks to share client data with some foreign authorities under a global exchange system to combat tax evasion in 2018, it was heralded as a watershed moment. Some even called it the end of Swiss banking secrecy. Our reporting suggests that that conclusion was overblown. Swiss banks do share client data with many countries, but many developing nations are excluded from the global exchange system set up to combat tax evasion. Meanwhile, Switzerland's famed Banking Secrecy Law Article 47 of the 1934 Federal Law on Banks remains in force. Those who fall foul of it risk a five-year prison sentence. So, um, you can read the rest of this article yourself. It is very interesting indeed. But let's move on to the next piece I have from just yesterday. Ominous reports of far more aggressive job cuts at Credit Suisse. Joy emails at Goldman Sachs. Yes, uh, Goldman and JP Morgan are recruiting people from Credit Suisse. Um, there's an article about that today on a CNBC. Credit Suisse is already cutting headcount. The Swiss bank has been spied cutting manage, uh, managing directors at its investment bank in Asia. It's also been seen losing all kinds of people from its credit sales and trading business globally, but mostly in New York, although this has been down to attrition rather than cuts, and it's embarked upon a strategy of exiting CHF 600M in costs from its technology function in the next two years, which will surely involve job reduction reductions as developers become more productive and manual processes are automated. But what if none of this is enough? Swiss newspaper Songtag Zeitung says it's not. In a piece yesterday, it said that as revenues decline, Credit Suisse is coming to realize that its current cost base is still unmanageable. CEO Thomas Gottstein is reportedly already discussing a new cost-cutting plan with the board ahead of Credit Suisse's second quarter results announcement on Wednesday when it will announce a loss. Sontag Zeitung's article is paywalled, but Reuters has seen it, and it doesn't sound pretty. Quote, the numbers are catastrophic, unquote. An unnamed senior banker at Credit Suisse is quoted as saying, quote, the cost structure is too large for the bank's revenue potential, unquote. Morale is reportedly low. It's a very difficult a different note to this that sounded by David Miller, head of Credit Suisse's investment bank in early June. Miller then declared that Credit Suisse was back and it had hired 55 managing directors in the past year and planned to hire 40 more. Inside Paradet. De Platz, however, points out that Miller has historically been a leveraged finance banker and that leveraged finance is one area where Credit Suisse stands to make a loss. That is not good. And moving on, finally, from just today, Credit Suisse CEO to step down from embattled investment bank, Wall Street Journal says... 
Credit Suisse T CEO uh, Thomas Gottstein is about to step down from the embattled investment bank the Wall Street Journal reported on Tuesday. The Zurich-based bank will soon announce the departure of Gottstein after a tenure in which he oversaw a series of embarrassing mishaps. <laughs> That's one, one way to word that, or scandals, and several unprofitable quarters, according to the journal. His replacement couldn't be determined, the newspaper paper said. Gottstein, a two-decade veteran of Credit Suisse, took over in early 2020 and was soon wrestling with the fallout of the meltdown of two key, key clients, the Archegos family office and the supply chain finance firm Greensill. So we just watched the Financial Times video talking about those scandals and many other scandals. To be fair to Gottstein, he was taking over an institution that was already majorly corrupt and had already been been rocked by scandals before he took over so I don't necessarily blame him for stepping down um, and I don't think he should take the hit for the um, unprofitable quarters that have hit the bank because I think that is due to their uh, behavior you know after 2008 during the 2008 financial crisis Credit Suisse was one of the banks that didn't really get a lot of attention they certainly weren't hauled in front of, um, you know, lawmakers and asked to explain uh, how they contributed to the collapse of the global banking system, uh, unlike Lehman Brothers and Goldman Sachs, among others. So they sort of went away unscathed from that and perhaps didn't have to change any of their lending practices and in risky investment practices. So it's very interesting to watch this happening in real time. What do you all think is going to happen with Credit Suisse? Are they going to collapse and implode? Or are they just having a little bit of a downturn and then they'll finally get back on track? 